This is the Six Figure Tradesman Podcast, Season 1, Episode 2. The title of this one is How Your Estimating Service Can Stand Out. I am your host, Jamie Henry, creator of the Estimating Business in a Box. And I've got a question. Does your estimating service look and sound like all the others? By that, I mean, if you go to your website and you look at all your competition's websites, are the colors about the same? Is the message all pretty much the same? Are you all just repeating one another like a bunch of parakeets? If you go to your social media accounts, does the social media kind of sound and look the same? Do you all kind of have the same voice and the same feel and the same look as one another? Yeah, you probably do. And the reason I say you probably do is because I do my research and I've looked out there and I can't tell you how many websites that I go one to the other and they look very, very similar and sound a lot alike. They say a lot of the same stuff. They promise the same promises and they're not really telling me anything different from one another. So what I want to do today is I want to give you my thoughts, my insight, and I've been at this for a decade, so I know a little bit about it, on how you can set yourself apart from all your competition that's out there. You know, you might not have a lot in your field. I don't know what field you're in. I'm mechanical. Um, I'm a mechanical Mo's, a mechanical outsource estimating service. So, you know, I know everybody in the mechanical world pretty well, and I know I've gone through a lot of their websites, and they all look and sound exactly alike. Now, one thing you're going to find if you go look for my website today, here's the thing that's going to blow your mind. You're not going to find my website. It's not there. I don't use my website anymore because I don't need to. I have created so many clients over the last decade that I know them and they know me. And so all of my work just comes from referrals and word of mouth and pretty much all previous customers. So, you know, you got to take care of your business and it'll take care of you. And I'm to that point to where I don't have a website anymore, but you're not there. You guys are probably all just getting started or getting ready to get started. And if you're going to go down this road, you're going to have to have some really compelling content in your website, and you're really going to have to utilize social media. When I did this a decade ago, social media, that was a whole new baby. That was in its infancy, okay? So I didn't have a whole lot of that in the early years. I did towards... You know, I kind of did towards the end of my advertising years when I had all my marketing going, and uh, I utilized it quite well, but I didn't have a whole lot of it. That's just something you're going to have to do because social media, that's how it's done these days, and we all know that, okay? So, but what do I mean by I'm going to teach you how to set yourself apart? How can you do that? Because like in the mechanical world, if you look for HVAC, outsource estimating services, a lot of the websites, you'll see pictures of some duct work on some kind of commercial project. Or you might see a bunch of pipes, you know, off of a chiller or a boiler system. Um, you're going to see a lot of the same. They're not the same photographs, but the, the image says the same damn thing. You know, it all says I can do piping or I can do duct work. And that image is a good visual to make you understand that that's what they do. I get that. That makes sense. I actually had that on my website in the beginning, too. Um, but, of course, when I did my first website over a decade ago, I only had two or three competitors and nobody's website was like mine. Most of them out there today are like what mine used to be in the beginning. So I feel I feel quite humbled that a lot of people kind of mimic that. And that's cool. It worked really well. But today it doesn't work as well. Um, if I were to build a brand new website today, what I would do is I would look at everybody else's. And I would pick a couple of solid elements and say probably that's what we have to do because in this business, those things have to be said and that's the best way to say it. But then I would look at the other 90% of the website of everybody that I was going to be competing against. And when I say competing against, I mean guys that I've heard of or I know, or when I do a Google search, everybody on page one, okay, page two, page three, page four, it doesn't really matter, man. Nobody's going to go past page one. We know that. When you Google for something, you're looking at the first 10 results and that's pretty much it. So even though you might have 50 pages of results in competition, the way you want to look at this is, There's only one page of competition when it comes to somebody searching for you on the internet. That is everybody on page one. Don't worry about page two and page three. Always, always focus on page one and always keep looking at page one every single week while you're in business. Because we all know that Google changes algorithms. People change their websites. Things happen to where somebody that was back in maybe number 15 works their way up to number two, three, or maybe even number one. Um, But I can tell you, I held the number one spot for years. When you Googled mechanical estimating services or mechanical estimating services for hire, QuickSum LLC 
was in the number one position for years. It did finally slip back to number two and then number three because I kind of slacked off on what I was doing and everybody else started increasing what they was doing. And that's proof right there that if you don't keep up with this, I don't care where you're at today. Next month, it can be different. So if you want to increase your rating, I promise you, you can do that. If you're happy sitting at number one and think you can uh, avoid it and ignore it, I guarantee you in a month, it won't be there again. So every day it's going to change drastically. Google changes algorithms. People change their content. And, you know, sometimes people use blogging very well to their advantage. And if you use blogs really well, even if you don't change anything else on your website, man, that blog can help bring you to number one. And so you might want to check into that if you haven't done any of that. I'll do a podcast on that in the future um, because blogs organically are one of the best things bang for buck out there. You got to do them yourself, though. You know, I hired people to do a bunch of my blogs in the early years, and they were all right. And that's before Google had a lot of strict requirements on blogging, how many words and keywords. It's, it's gotten a lot different. Today, if you want to say it and you want to say it right, you got to say it yourself because nobody knows your business but you. Plain and simple. And if you don't know your business better than everybody else around you, you probably haven't planned out your business well enough. Okay. If I can come into your company within three days, I can figure out your entire business process, your entire aspirations, what your goal is, and then beat you or cap you on that, then you haven't planned far enough ahead. So if you think everybody else knows it as well as you, go back to the drawing board and replan your business because you haven't done it right. And then once you know that and you know it better than anybody, you need to write the blogs or you need to come up with the outline for the blogs, give somebody else that and let them find the data and put the context together. But uh, you, you've got to decide what that blog is going to be, what the heart and soul of it is going to be, and then maybe somebody else can help you with it. But if you put it all on somebody else, man, it's not going to work. Those blogs aren't going to be nothing like they could be. They won't be as great as they could be. And why do you want to do anything mediocre? Everything we do every day, we want to strive to be the best, period. If you're not striving to be the best, then you don't care anymore or you're bored with what you're doing or you've got some other stress in your life that you need to deal with. So deal with that stress, get your fire back, shoot for number one, and then come back to the drawing board because that is the only way to get the kind of success you're looking for. Okay, enough rambling on that. So let's talk about how I can help you set yourself apart. You know, one of the one of the best things you can do is uh, give people some sort of free, valuable information on your website and through your social media or any other means you can think of. And so what I mean is give them what I'm giving you. I'm giving you all this for free. This is a free podcast. The information doesn't cost you anything. Years of my experience, my mistakes, my achievements – I'm just putting it out there on the air for you to absorb. And so you should do the same thing for your clients, man. Why wouldn't you want to give them something for nothing? Because if you give them something of very high value today, it lets them know, number one, you're serious about what you do and you care. Okay. Number two, it sets you as a leader in the industry. There's a lot of people that know the same thing. But the first guy that comes to the front and talks excessively about that that one thing that we all know, all of a sudden, everybody looks back. Even the people who already knew what he's saying will look back and say, wow, damn, he's a leader. Okay, he knows what he's talking about. This guy's got it figured out. I'm going to listen to more of what he's got to say. <laughs> he may have only said the exact same thing you already knew, but he just said it in a different way. So you want to give away something of value. I can't tell you exactly what that is. You'll just have to sit down and brainstorm. You know, maybe you can uh, give some advice on how they could – tighten up their in-house estimating services or, you know, how they could maybe go from this type of a project to that type of a project. And I'll tell you later on how you can do that with a little bit of research, your own research. You can kind of look at a company and get a feel for what type of projects are a better fit for them. You know, we all know every project is not equal and every project category is not equal for every contractor. So not every contractor out there can make money at a school system. A whole new school project takes a lot of manpower, high-end manpower. That's you know Usually it's prevailing wage rates. So you got to have deep pockets to have those kind of wage rates while the, the whole pay is going out before you get any money coming in. Um, it's not suited for everybody. So you got to figure out what is your client's niche. Where are they going to make the money? You know, maybe it's big box stores. As crazy as that sounds for some of my clients who could never make a dollar at a big box store, 
I've had other clients whose company structure was set up just right to where they could go in and they could make really good money on box stores. So you got to learn this and you got to figure that out. And then you can bring that to your, your clients and say, Hey, look, with the research of what we've done in the past, you know, this is something I want to provide you free of charge. This is my advice on where we need to help you steer in the future. Um, so you want to communicate that to them and you want to share that data with them so that they appreciate you and value you. You know, you're not here just to estimate projects. You are here to help take that company from where they're at now to a higher level in the future. And you might want to do some research with your client to find out what that higher level to them is. Do they want to do $40 million in revenue? Or do they care less about total revenue and more about total profits? Or do they maybe need some help trying to figure out their overhead costs because not everybody understands how to figure their overhead and they want to streamline that so they can increase their revenues or their, their profits. And so you got to figure out what's their objective. Don't assume their objective. You don't know. You're the estimator, man. Your job is to figure out the job cost, put in their profit margins, their associated costs on top of that, and then bid the job. Don't assume you know what their objectives are. And even if you think you know what they are today, or maybe you even know what they are today, a year from now, don't assume they're still the same because companies' objectives change just like yours. So make sure you keep in contact with them. That is one of the most absolute promising ways to keep a client. And you're going to hear me call these clients. Customers are clients. They're not customers. A customer is somebody who comes through the door and goes back out. That's at a grocery store and a retail. We are not retail people here. We look for clients. We are professionals. So you want to, every client you get, you want to hold it. You want to cherish it. And the best way to do that, the best way I can guarantee you is to make sure that they are always happy. And how do you know if they're happy? You don't. You got to ask. Man, don't assume you know. I don't care what they say in a casual conversation to you when you talk to them on the phone. That doesn't mean that they're happy, okay? Because there's two sides to all of us. We're all business people and we're all just a human being, just a normal person. And sometimes we talk to our clients and we forget that this is all business and we get going down this personal conversation. We're talking about the ball game or, you know, maybe we're talking about politics, which I suggest you never discuss with a client. Or maybe you're discussing religion. And again, with clients, might I suggest you never, ever discuss politics and religion. I can guarantee you, no matter how much you two are in sync today on politics and religion, that will change in the future. Just don't talk about it. But anyway, we do. And so, you know, if you assume that they're happy, you're not going to try to figure out how you can make them happier or how to rein them back in when they're not happy because you don't know it. So how are you going to know? Well, probably the absolute easiest no-brainer I can explain to you is every single time you send a job back, wait 24 to 48 hours. Either email them or call them, whatever your preference is, whatever their preference is. A lot of my clients prefer I only email because they're too busy. So Whatever your contact method is, man, get back to them and ask them. Say, hey, look, we, we just bid this Best Buy for you or this, you know, this new school system, whatever it was. Remind them of the project. Remind them of how much the bid was because these are vital statistics that shows you are vested in their company. If we just say, hey, that job I bid last Tuesday, how'd you like that? They don't have, first of all, they don't have any idea what you're talking about. You're the estimator. You know the jobs. They don't. They don't know the jobs you're bidding until they win them. Because if they track the 90% of bids you don't win, they're going to be overwhelmed. They only care about the 10% you're winning. And that's the ones they'll remember. So when you say, you know, this elementary school that we bid over here, you know, at such and such with these such and such contractors and at this dollar amount and give them some, just a few, two or three, two or three, that's it, really key topics about that project that stood out. You know, maybe it was a, 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 replacement of three new chillers at the school that was already existing. I don't know, whatever it is, just really highlight that with them and say, look, you know, how'd that look? How'd that sound? Did you, was you guys happy with what we had? Did you feel comfortable with what we did and the numbers we came up with? And then ask them, even if they're happy, even if they're tickled pink, ask them, how can I do better? What could I do the next time to make it even better for you? I know that sounds crazy. You've already got a happy customer. They said they're happy. So why in the world would you want to go out of your way to do anything extra? Well, because you don't just want a happy client today. You want a happy client tomorrow. And so if in that client's mind, they walk away from this conversation every time you have this conversation after every bid, they're always thinking this person really wants to do better on the next one. 
They always want to do better on the next one. So if somebody else contacts them and says, I can do this for you and I can probably do it cheaper, I can do it faster, it doesn't matter. They're not going to listen. They have no interest in what the other guy has to say because they love your work. You're always trying to make it better. And as long as you're not making mistakes and screwing things up, they're going to keep you, I can assure you. You can get to that point to where, like I said a little while ago, I don't have a website. I don't have any social media. I do for six-figure tradesmen because I'm putting my focus now on education and coaching. That's what I love to do. That's what I'm going to do. I do very little estimating for just a very select few clients. You want to get to that point in your life where even if you don't want to do something different and this is all you ever want to do, why do you want to spend 200 bucks a year on a website? Why do you want to spend countless hours on social media if you don't have to? I know everybody says you got to do it. You got to market. You got to advertise. Hey, I don't know what your goals are, man. If your goal was $300,000 a year and you're making four, you may be very happy with where you're at and not want to excel or not exceed that. And so put the money in your pocket. Why waste it? Get to that point. Make everybody so happy in your past that your future is taken care of. Okay, that is how you can set yourself apart from your competition. I can assure you 99% of the guys out there, the only thing they care about is where the next job comes from and how much money they can get for it. You know, and sure, I understand that. I've been there too in the past, especially in the first years when you're starting out. But I was never desperate, never. From day one when I started my company, I needed work and I knew it. I never stressed about the work, never was worried about it because I knew, I knew my ability and I knew that if I could get one chance with that client, just one project, I could make them happy enough and make them understand my value to where they would always come back. I've got a client today that I have worked for, for 10 years, not 10 years straight. They were like one of my very first clients back in 2010 and so, or 2011, I forget. But they were one of my very first clients. And so they were, they did a few jobs and they went away and they were gone for years. I mean, for several years. And then they came back and they said, Hey, look, here's our situation. Here's the bind we're in. We need somebody to do all of our estimating. Are you interested? And I said, you know what? Yeah, we can make this work. Here, here's where I'm at. Here's what I need to make that happen. And, and here's what I'm going to promise in delivery. So, you know, we worked out the details. We come to an agreement. And so for the last several years, I have been doing all of their estimating exclusively. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's what this can provide for you. That's what this lifestyle can be. And that's how if you set yourself apart from everybody else, that is what you too can achieve. You can do this. Don't think you can. I'm not special. I'm nobody special at all. Um, I'm just as smart as you and I'm just as dumb as you. We are equal. I don't know anything more than you that you can't learn. Okay. So you can do this. I have no doubt. I did it. You can do it. And I'll teach you how to do it. And if you want it and if you have the drive and the will to succeed, that's the one thing I can't teach you and I can't give you and nobody else can provide for you. You got to have the will to succeed and the drive to want to make it happen. So if you want to set yourself apart, that's how you're going to make it happen. Always ensure they're happy. Even if they're happy, try to figure out how they can be more happy. Okay. Some other little things you can do, you know, on their work anniversary, if they hired you January 1st, on January 1st, send them something nice. I mean, we make money in this business. Okay. So you can afford to send them a nice little card and say, thank you. Write a personal note in there, you know, put the person's name in there specifically too, and then write a little special note something personable, and then sign off on it. Not a corporate card like everybody else with a damn stamp. All right, send them a personal card saying thank you for your business. And then maybe send them something special like a, uh, if you know they love Starbucks, man, put a $20 Starbucks card in there. That's not bribery. That's a thank you. I don't have any problem with that. Um, I've done it many times. Or if it's a small, maybe you work for a small guy that's just got a really small shop. And you know he only has four or five employees. Come the holidays, maybe you want to send his shop some kind of a, a gift basket, a corporate gift basket, whether it's nuts or cheese and, and bologna or whatever, 40, 50, 60, 80 bucks. The, the result is priceless, man. It says, I was thinking of you. This is the holidays. First of all, make sure they celebrate the same holidays. All right. Don't send a Jehovah's Witness a Christmas basket because that's not going to get you anywhere. So make sure you know your client and then send them something appropriate. You know, um, if they're Jewish, do something appropriate. If they're Muslim, do something appropriate. Learn your clients. It don't matter who they are. You know, um, we're all equal people, but you, you don't want to offend them by bringing, enforcing 
your religious – you may not be forcing your religious beliefs on them by making a mistake like that, but they might see it that way. So, you know, first of all, know who they are and then do something nice, something kind, something personable. Not because it's what you need to do, but because it's what you want to do. It's going to set you apart from everybody else. It says, you know, I'm thinking about you and because of you, we all get to enjoy the holidays together. And then the only other thing I could recommend, you know, after every conversation, no matter what conversation you had with them, good, bad, professional, uh, personal, whatever it is, when you end that phone call, when you're speaking personally to them face to face or on the phone, when you end the call or when you walk away, Stop. Just a, a second of silence. See, I just did that. I just, that split second of silence I just provided you, you were hanging on my next word. So you want to do that. Tell them, look, I appreciate your business. And I, I think you know that, but I want to make sure you know that. So I appreciate your business. I've really enjoyed our conversation and I can't wait to talk to you again. I hope you have a great day and hang up or walk away. That's it. It's that simple. And I'm not saying, I'm not telling you to rehearse this and bullshit your clients. I'm telling you to mean it, to really think about this, to every time you walk away from a client, you know, give them a little something in the end, just to just five, 10 seconds of your time to say, thank you. I appreciate you. And I really look forward to talking to you again. The impact, man, it's that, it's that human, that human one-on-one -on -one impact that we can have with one another with these little things, little things. They are, what's it cost you? Cost you nothing. How much time does it take you? 10 seconds. I mean, come on. There is no way in the world you can buy that kind of, of, of marketing, if you, if you will. Um, because people love to do business with people they like. And I hope you figured that out by now. That's how the world goes round. People do business with people they like. So even if your price is a little high or whatever the other little nuance is that they may not like, they're still going to work with you as long as they pretty much like you. So, and vice versa. You're going to work with them better if you like them. I've had clients in the past. We didn't click. It never had anything to do with their estimate, ever. They always still got a top-notch professional estimate from me. We just didn't have a whole lot of personal conversations in between. So that happens, you know, and they don't stick around forever because you don't have that element, that click. Doesn't mean I didn't try. It's just it wasn't there. And you can't force it. You can't fake it. And if you do, that's, you know, it's like trying to fake a relationship with anybody. It's going to bring itself to the forefront. It's going to be noticeable and it's going to kind of put people on a, on a off path to you. So, you know, you got to be careful with that too. You got to use a little bit of personal judgment there. If you feel like you're having to try too hard, maybe sometimes that try isn't worth it. Okay. But it, if it feels like it's somebody worth hanging on to and you've got that connection and you click, you know, you're going to want to try to do whatever you can to keep them. That's pretty much it. That's how you can differentiate yourself from everybody else. It's about how you treat the people you're working with, the people that are hiring you, that are writing the check. And, you know, just spend some time to get to know these people because you're asking them to trust you as a professional estimator. And in order to trust you as a pro, first, I got to trust you as a human being. So, you know, that's why you listen to my podcast. You Hopefully you trust what I'm saying and, and you feel like I have your best interest at heart because I do. I want to teach you something. I want, I want to educate you. I want to inspire you. I want to make you a better version of yourself. And in return, by doing that, it's going to make me a better version of myself. So this is win-win for all of us. So I hope you learned something new. Um, if you didn't learn anything new today, at least I hope I jogged your memory a little bit, you know, on something you already knew. And you can remind yourself, hey, I want to implement that and I'm going to start doing that that way. So that's it for this podcast. The next podcast, I'm going to teach you five daily habits that you can start implementing to improve your daily production. So you're going to love that one. That was going to bring a lot of value to you as an estimator. I can promise you. And before I go, look, I want you to go and look at all the other modes in your field, all the other mechanical outsource estimators or whatever outsource estimators you, your field is from. I want you to go look at their websites and look at their social media. And I want you to take notes of how they all look a lot alike, you know, from the colors, the pictures, the images, the statements, the promises, make notes of all those things, write them down and put them in word. I don't care how you write it down, but make notes of that. And then I want you to decide one thing. I want you to sit back and say, after I've looked at all this, what is the one thing that I'm going to do starting tomorrow that's going to set me apart from all of them? Period. It's that simple. Figure them out. Go look at all their elements that, that they're very cohesive and, and just kind of tie from one website to the next. They all look like they were built by the same guy. They sound the same. 
And then you need to figure out what's that one thing. Just one thing today is all I need. I'll worry about the second thing the next day. But for tomorrow, I got to figure out that one thing. Figure it out, write it down. And tomorrow, tomorrow you implement it. You figure it out today before you go to sleep. And tomorrow morning, you start implementing that new one thing that you're going to do to set yourself apart. This is Jamie Henry. I've been your host, Six Figure Tradesman. I am the creator of Estimating Business in a Box. And I look forward to seeing you in Season 1, Episode 3.